everybody. Today we're going out fishing offshore in the Florida Keys. Going out to see if we can catch some fish by the humps. But before we go out to there to fish, what we found worked good last year was having live bait. So rather than going out in the Atlantic, we're going the other direction out in the Gulf. It's this little island that's close to where we stay to see if we can't catch some live bait. And this island is in kind of shallow water, three to four foot of water, and it seems to hold a lot of bait around it. And when you bring a chum bag out, you'll, you'll bring those pilchards in and the pinfish. So we were going out there to try to get us a good good net full. And uh, once we get the fish turned on and you throw those live baits in, they tend to go crazy. Yeah. So get out there and put our anchor in. It doesn't take long. Yep. Get the chum bag out and you just kind of wait for them to come up. A few minutes, they started coming up. So we just took our cast net and tossed it on them a few times and, and loaded up the live well. Uh, I, the trick is to use quarter inch mesh because if you use three eighths inch mesh, the smaller baits, pilchards, will get stuck in the mesh and you'll spend about three days trying to pick them things out and, and you lose a lot of your bait. Yeah, unfortunately the baits weren't very big, but still good to have. So finally get our bait and we head back through the islands and then into the Atlantic and out to the humps. Um, Away we go, nice pretty day. Yeah, I mean, it's real tempting to say, oh, let's just go fishing, but you know, to put that extra time in the bait, you know, it, it, it's worth it. It does pay off, especially when you get them up around the boat. We found that out last year too with them. Yeah. So we get out there, getting close to the humps, and uh, my dad sees birds. And big, that's... big bunch of birds. Yeah. All right, guys, we spotted some birds. So that's a good sign, close to the humps. Oh yeah, a lot of birds. Oh man, there's a ton of birds, Dad. There were boats in the area, but none of them were real close to the humps. We had to ourselves there for a little bit. Yeah, not long, because once we got, I guess they got radar or something, because once we got a fish on, it seems like, man, all of a sudden there was boats cutting around us everywhere. But we also had to deal with a lot of grass out there too, around yeah. the humps, it seems to bunch the grass up. We get out there and start putting our lines out. You know, we, we'd use that turb, or uh, we use rattle that jet. rattle jet, yeah. And we caught Benita on it. You might have seen our high speed video of catching Benita on that little lure. So we're like, well, let's try it out here at the humps, see what we can do. We're getting our other lines out and all of a sudden, boom, and before we get them all out, we got a fish on. Right, and we was like, this is gonna be a good day. <laughs> we're trolling and another thing that was pretty interesting is the current has been blasting out there. And you can, there's an upwelling, you know, where the humps are. And there's the upwelling, folks. Yeah. Nothing. Very distinct upwelling, where you can see it just gets these waves, it gets rough. I mean, not nothing crazy rough, but it's like flat on one side, flat on this side, and, and where the humps are, there's like upwelling, rough, a little bit of white cap, and stuff like that. Yeah, and when you get, when you get south of where the uh, current's flowing, you're in that smooth water, it don't take long for that current to push you into that upwelling. Mm -hmm. And while you're fighting the fish, all of a sudden you're noticing the boat's rocking and carrying on. So kind of be aware of that when you're out there around the humps. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Look at that bad boy go. Ah. Nope, black pen. There we go. First one in the boat on this uh, crazy upwelling. We got that tune in the boat, great way to start it. And we kept trolling. Although the next fish was a dolphin. Right, and not, not a huge one, probably what, 24, 23, 24 inch dolphin. You know, a little better than legal size. And uh, we kept trolling, we was hoping to get some more dolphin. And then, and then we had the high line, I think, mm -hmm. and it got tangled around the tip or something. For some reason it wasn't. Right, yeah. Um, we had that rattle jet on the high line. It got wrapped around the tip, and it looked like there was grass on it. It was like pulling it pretty hard. I saw there was, it was wrapped around it, so I unwrapped it. And uh, start reeling up and realized we got a fish on. Another tuna hit it. So I wonder he didn't break the line with that. Yeah. Because them tuna pulled pretty good. Thankfully it wasn't a big tuna, and he just kind of went with the boat, you know, so he didn't break a line and, and caught another fish. <laughs> I see green, I think it's a mahi. Oh, 
it was basically three humps close together off a marathon. And we started at the middle one. And fighting these fish, you know, we were, we were catching a, several dolphin. You know, they were hitting our lures, you know, we're trolling for, we figured tuna, and we're just getting a dolphin a lot of, uh, mainly dolphin. But, you know, in between, it's just the two of us, it's pretty tough, you know, when you got fish on and clearing lines, so it takes us a little longer. You know, after fighting several of those fish, and with that current blasting, you know, I see some upwelling, I'm like, what is this? And I realize we're at the western hump. We've drifted a couple miles off that center hump, you know, and it's, you know, it felt like a very short amount of time. Right, the current's moving six, seven knots, so you figure you're doing a mile in whatever, 10 minutes. So mm -hmm. once you get tied up in fish, it don't take long to go. We were trolling in one direction. We were going three, ish miles per hour and when we turned around i left the rpms the same i didn't touch the throttle on the boat going the other direction we were going 11 and a half so that tells so you it's, it's kicking it it's kicking it and you could feel it in the boat too when you would get sideways that you could really feel the pull of the current yeah you know as we went throughout the day it kind of slowed down and, and we you know drifted to the western one and we rode back until we saw something good and we ended up going to the um, furthest you know southwest hump and uh, kind of looked at that and it looked okay but it was really crowded trolled there and we decided well let's head back in and if we see something good on the way we'll stop and take a look so we get in the boat and he's in the tower looking and we, we take off and we get maybe a, a couple miles and then I, I hear him yelling to stop because he'd spotted some birds. Yeah, there was a, a, a nice pile of birds feeding. It was just this side of an upwelling, too. There's the upwelling. And at that point, I said, well, what I'll do is I'll get up in the tower. I'll take one of the lines up there, and I'll put it out. Well, as I was going up in the tower, I seen a nice mahi swim by. So um, I hand him the rod. You know, he's way up in the tower, and he puts that rod back there and starts trolling as I put a couple other things out. Well, that's when he gets a, a fish on. Yeah, so we get a nice fish on, and I hand the rod down to Jeremy. He starts fighting the fish, and I s scuttle down and get ready for what the uh, battle is to start. Um, while he's fighting the fish, nice mahi. I uh, reach into the thing, scoop up a good pile of bait, and I throw him out there, and man, all of a sudden there's mahi all around the boat. Yeah, I mean, we get mine in, and we grab our pitch rods. So I quickly take a live bait, you know, hook it on my pitch rod, throw it out. And they're kind of looking, they ain't going crazy. We throw some more live bait out and they scatter and the fish get excited. And that's when I get hooked up. Oh yeah, yeah, look, I'm looking at them. Yeah, so he's fighting his. I get in there and I find me a nice little uh, um, uh, pinfish. I think it's gonna be a perfect bait and it turned out to be a good bait. And uh, as he gets his bait close by, I flip mine out there and boom, didn't take long, one was on it. Got it. Oh, there it goes. Jumped a little, yeah. Wait, something just hit. Wait, something splashed, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, yeah, yeah, look at him. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. Ah, I got him. Ah. There we go. Yeah. He's going by it. You ready? You get him? Awesome. Oh, yeah. So um, that's what we did, and that live bait really came in handy. I mean, it made the difference right there. It resulted in us getting three more dolphin. And and, and if, had we not drifted into that upwelling, we'd have probably caught more because they were all around the boat and there was one real nice, nice fish that was down there. I was gonna put a big pinfish on, but we lost him. Yeah. Besides the uh, live chum, we still had a chum bag that we used to catch our bait. So when the fish came up, we put our chum bag out, threw live bait, and it was, it was very effective. And the only problem was that current was ripping and it drifted us into an upwelling and it got, you know, shaky. You couldn't see down where the fish were at. We couldn't see anything close by the boat. So we were, I think we tried to get back into clear water, but we never seen the fish again after that. Yeah. 
and it's kind of the downside, you know, with two people, it's just uh, not as quick to react. But it still it paid off having that live bait and the chum and just being ready. You know, one of the lessons we learned last year is to have that stuff, you know, ready so you can really uh, take advantage of it when the opportunity comes up. But yeah, overall it was a great trip. You know, take the time to uh, get live bait if you can and have that chum ready, have those pitch baits ready, you know, and just capitalize on that moment, look for them birds, you know. And you gotta be ready to go too because if you see something floating, don't pass it up. It don't matter if it's just a little limb or a lid to a cooler, there's all kind of stuff that uh, float around out there. And on those floating things, you find triple tail, you'll find uh, mahi, and sometimes there'll even be a wahoo under yeah. under it too, so. And maybe there's nothing, but you gotta check. I never, never, never yeah. pass them up. You have to have a rattle jet. Get your rattle jet to keep in your box because we really had good luck on them. Mm -hmm. um, those and the little feather flies. Yeah, feathers. yeah, and, and nothing on them, just a fly, hook, and way back. But today it was predominantly in terms of lures and the rattle jet did really well for us. You know, I was surprised, you know, I had Ballyhoo out there, but they were just hitting the lures that day. I mean, they, they didn't just care for the Ballyhoo. Cheaper that way too. Yeah. Unless you break one off. So I uh, caught tuna and dolphin on it, and that was, that was pretty exciting. Just a stock rig, I mean, I didn't rig it myself. I just left it as it came. Well, thanks guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and, and learned some tips and tricks and what we do to catch them. Be sure to subscribe to us here on YouTube. Also follow us on Instagram. Got a lot of cool pictures and give you sneak peeks of the videos we're working on at the time. Also Facebook uh, and all the other social media stuff. And tell your friends. <laughs> they don't have to be your friend. You tell them. If you don't like them, get them to watch it. And that some, I mean, some people might get aggravated. We get thumbs down sometimes. Even on the puppy videos where like they're the cutest things in the world and people are like, I'm like, what? <laughs> Here figure. Cat lovers. Yeah, exactly. Haters. That's what I call them. Well, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.